multiple myeloma is a blood cancer um, that arises from white cells called plasma cells. We don't really understand why it happens. However, significant progress has been made in the past decade in developing new treatments for this cancer that it, patients with the diagnosis can now live three to four times as long as what they did 15 years ago. One interesting aspect about multiple myeloma is that all patients with myeloma start off with what we call a monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, which can be present for as long as 20 to 30 years before they get myeloma. The vast majority of the patients with monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance don't get myeloma. Only about 20% of them actually do. So it does offer us an opportunity to potentially identify an early stage of this cancer where there might be a better chance of us being able to either cure the disease completely or at least prevent the myeloma from developing for much longer period of time than what is happening currently. Now a small group of patients uh, will go through a phase what we call smoldering multiple myeloma where they have a lot more of the myeloma cells in their bone marrow. They make a lot more protein than the patient with monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. And if you were to just look at the laboratory values and the bone marrow biopsy, you might think the person has myeloma. However, they don't have any ill effects that we can perceive, like the bone disease or the effect on the kidneys that patients with myeloma have. So in the past, what we have done is to watch these patients very carefully hoping that we can actually intervene or identify um, something bad happening before it actually happens so that we can start them on treatment at the nick of the time. However, it does not work always that way. And many of these patients might come into the clinic or the emergency room uh, with one of the consequences of multiple myeloma like the kidney failure or a broken bone uh, or even a, a bone uh, fracture that might compromise their um, spinal cord. Now, with the availability of uh, drugs which are safer than what we had before, um, we have an opportunity now to potentially identify those people who have a higher risk of progressing from small ring myeloma to myeloma so that we can treat them earlier than what we do today so that we can potentially, again, avoid some of these complications. Now, obviously, um, for that to be done in the clinic, we need two pieces of information. One is we need to be able to identify patients who are likely to progress and we also need to be able to show that by treating them early we actually do alter the outcomes and now we have both those um, available recently there have been larger studies that have been done trying to identify a risk stratification system and we have developed one that is fairly simple it just uses three laboratory tests uh, in patients with small ring myeloma that we typically do in all these patients and using those three numbers, uh, or uh, in addition, sometimes also using the um, genetic abnormalities on the myeloma cells, we can predict with reasonable accuracy who are going to develop myeloma. Now, the next question is, can we take those patients and treat them with um, one of the myeloma therapies and make an impact? And recently, there was a large phase three trial that was done for patients with high-risk moldering myeloma. So these are patients who have a high risk, maybe a 50% or higher risk of getting myeloma in the next two years and treated them with a drug called lenalidomide or just watch them. The patients who received the treatment um, did much better. They had a much longer time for the myeloma to develop. And in a similar study from Spain, they were even able to show that these patients who are at high risk of developing myeloma actually lived longer uh, by being treated early. So I think we have now sufficient evidence uh, to apply this in the clinic so that we can look at the small ring myeloma patient, predict that they have a high risk of developing myeloma, and either treat them with one of the available drugs or put them on a clinical trial that is looking at more novel approaches. So for example, we don't know treating them with just one drug like what we did in the clinical trial is better or treat them like myeloma, which is a more appropriate uh, direction. So we are actually doing a couple of trials, a phase three trial that's looking at the milder treatment or the treatment that we give for the myeloma patients to see which approach is better for the high risk model. In addition, we are also looking at some of the more intense treatments we use for myeloma to see if we can use those treatments to maybe even cure some of the patients with high risk moldering. Clearly, these research um, efforts are early in the early stages. 
um, but there are um, opportunities to, for us to significantly impact the outcomes of patients with myeloma. So I, I think, you know, at, at the minimum, we have to have all the testing done to get a better sense of the risk of progression. We have to have that discussion as to whether we do one of these standard treatments if you're high risk or should we be participating in a clinical trial.